What's up guys, in this video, I wanna give you a quick guide to completing the square. Now there's a lot of reasons that we want to complete the square. We can use that to write it in vertex form to identify the vertex of the parabola. And sometimes we can use completing the square to solve them. But in this example, what I want to do is just kind of like give you the basic idea of what we're trying to achieve when we are completing the square. And I think the main thing that I want you to understand is the idea of creating this perfect square. So let me just go ahead and change this out a little bit. And I think this is a rule that I want you to use anytime that you are struggling. One thing I always like to tell my students, like, you know, when you're learning something and you're taking a test or anything else, and maybe the numbers kind of seem tricky or you're not really sure what to do, like go back and use some basic numbers, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually change this equation over here to something that's a little bit easier for me to understand. All right, now you might be wondering, well, why'd you pick these numbers? Like, well, what's special about this? Well, the reason what's special about this is this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. Now remember, perfect square trinomials are, are going to be trinomials that your first term is squared and your last term is squared. And what's so important about a perfect square trinomial is that they can be factored down into a binomial squared. So you can see like, in this example here, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is going to be my vertex form. That's what I'm trying to create when I am completing the square. One thing that I, you know, I want you to kind of idea is like, when you're looking at, you know, trying to complete the square, I'm gonna kind of go through this in two different methods, on uh, two different ways. One thing I want you to think about is like, all right, if I need to take this and I need to create this binomial squared, right? That's what is putting things into vertex form. Like what number do I need? Well, obviously I already have an x squared and a six x, right? I just need that nine. I don't want the eight. I just need that nine. So one thing you could do is just say, well, all right, well, why don't we just add the nine then, right? And let's just go ahead and add the nine. I'll make that in yellow here. And then um, obviously we know that, well, you just can't like add a nine to one side, right? Remember we like either you're gonna add nine to one side, you have to add nine to the other side. All right, and then do remember like the other thing is like, don't forget about the eight, like the eight's still there. You just can't like not forget about the eight. So let's just go ahead and write the eight over here, okay? Now here's something that's really important. Actually, let me write this in with there. Okay, so now what we did is we knew, if we had an x squared plus a six x, we knew the number that was gonna create that perfect square trinomial was a nine. So I just added that nine in there, right? Kind of like some math magic. But it's okay because I added a nine onto both sides, right? I mean, again, if you have an equation, as long as you're doing one thing to one side, you're doing the same thing to the other side, it's gonna be okay. You're still keeping an equivalent equation. So now I know that this factors down to this binomial squared. So now I can have a, um, let's see, an x plus three, quantity squared. Now again, if I want to solve for y, right, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to subtract a 9 on both sides. And therefore, remember this is going to there. So 8 minus 9 is going to be a minus 1. And there you go. Now, there is a way to kind of work through a problem when you kind of know what you're working with as far as creating a perfect square trinomial. But let me go through this exact same process if we didn't already recognize a perfect square trinomial. If we didn't know x squared plus 6x, that is going to give us 9. So let me just kind of do the exact same problem, but also give you some, some different ways to kind of approach it. So one thing that you always want to do is we have these first two terms. So again, that is what you're going to want to look into creating that perfect square trinomial. So what we'll do is we'll put parentheses around them. Then the next thing we want to do is like, this one was obvious, right? I kind of like, per, like I wanted you to recognize that relationship. But one of the hard things about completing the square is not always is it obvious what the, what the value is that creates the perfect square trinomial. So what we can do to always find that value is take our B divided by two and square it. So in this case, you would have a six divided by two squared, which is going to equal a nine. Now, rather than adding a nine to both sides, notice what I had to do. I just subtract it, right, from both sides to solve for the y. So what I like to do is I like to add and subtract it on the same side. So now I have y is equal to a x squared plus a six x, right? We're gonna do a plus nine, and then we're gonna do is a minus nine, and then plus eight, right? Because isn't that exactly what happened anyways? Like I had to add the nine, then I had to subtract the nine anyways. So this is just, a, this is just making this process go by much quicker. And now I have created my perfect square trinomial, so I can go ahead and factor it down. So that is a quick, easy way to complete the square. But if you wanna know a step-by-step -step method for completing the square, then that's gonna come up in the next video.